All right, well, if you're watching this channel and you're a toy collector, there's a good chance you're probably a comic book reader, too, which is why I occasionally do videos just on comic books. And today I want to do one on the comic book sort of a company crossover universe changing event. This has been something that's been around with the big companies since the late 70s, early 80s, where comic book companies would create media events, having all their characters come together. Sometimes, like in the case of Crisis on Infinite Earths for DC's 50th anniversary, it was sort of a continuity fixing event. Other times, in things like Marvel's Secret Wars, it's used to introduce new versions of characters, or like in Marvel's Civil War, changing the status quo, where things will quote unquote never be the same. Like Peter Parker revealing to the world that he's actually Spider Man during the course of that event. Sometimes they're done for shock value, sometimes they're just done to show that characters will evolve and change, and the version of the character that you grew up with might be different. Well, change is definitely part of storytelling, but for a lot of comic book fans, this can be very off putting. And the New 52 reboot for DC, which was about 12 years ago now, gosh, it's been that long, rebooted the DC universe in a way that was kind of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It basically restarted the entire DC universe, and all of the stories that we had been reading for years and decades suddenly didn't count anymore. Eventually this was rectified, but at the time it felt very... Uh, kind of like a kick in the pants, because, you know, we were invested heavily in reading these comics. A lot of us have tons of bins in their closet, or, you know, whether you keep them in drawers or white boxes, or, you know, you've uh, created your own way to categorize your comic books for ease of read. Either way, we're invested emotionally, physically, with the amount of space, monetarily, with the amount of money we've spent on these. So finding out that events didn't happen... They're not just stories. I mean, these are characters that we have become friends with. Maybe it's, you know, not virtually, but it's, you know, symbolically. I mean, it's not like, you know, you're actually going to go hang out with Batman, although that would be kind of cool, although probably dangerous. Yeah, Batman's not necessarily going to be your friend in real life. Well, he doesn't exist in real life, don't tell anyone. But yeah, you know, this was kind of like having a favorite show canceled. You're so invested and suddenly find out, there's no more episodes of Wonder Falls. You have to live with it. So while these events are made to sometimes change characters, streamline them, and ideally invite new people in to enjoy a comic book universe, changes are sometimes, you know, when they fundamentally change who a character is or, you know, or, 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 or how they've been for the past, you know, 50, 60 years, such as Alan Scott suddenly after New 52 was, was, was gay. Uh, you know, just in, I'm more in the tune of introduce a new gay character or introduce a new ethnic character, like like Black Panther, perfect example. You want a black character in the Marvel Universe? Create a new one and look at how popular he is versus taking an existing character and saying, oh, that character is now black or that character is now gay or that character now never had superpowers and never even existed. All right, so I've done a couple videos where I've mentioned my favorite personal comic book, Savage Dragon by Eric Larson. You may know him from his run on Spider-Man, or from the fact that he has been doing Savage Dragon consistently for 30 years at Image Comics. It's funny, he's done this for 30 years. A lot of people still think of him as a, just a Spider-Man artist. Either way, in Savage Dragon, Eric Larson was very clear that he agreed that the whole, these, these reboots, things like New 52, I'm not picking on DC Comics, I just want to use them as an example, but lots of companies use these crossovers to reboot their universe. So one of Dragon's foes here, Mr. Glum, he's not a giant guy like this, this is just like, you know, a typical comic book uh, cover. Uh, he's, a, he's a little guy, he, he just has a giant suit that he wears, so he actually only comes to Savage Dragon's knees. He's, a, he's an interdimensional dictator. Eric likes to think of him as like sort of the last Kirby invention that, you know, got lost in time. So there's been continuity changes in Savage Dragon over the years. The biggest one, and I'll go quickly over this stuff, in issue 76, Dragon basically went to a nether alternate reality where everything was totally screwed up and apocalyptic and events weren't how he remembered. I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but it was, again, basically Eric's take on something like Age of Apocalypse, where the main character was going to get whisked away to a sort of more hostile 
land where villains were in charge. In this case, the character was Cyberface, who was ruling the world, as opposed to Apocalypse. But it was the same concept as Age of Apocalypse. You're probably more familiar with that one, just since, you know, it was bigger. Marvel, and there's been toys, etc. So yeah, this was basically Eric's version of that, but he wanted to make it stick. He didn't want to just have this sort of Age of Apocalypse thing and then have no consequences. So even when Savage Dragon had the opportunity to jump back to his original dimension, he wound up not being able to do that, and he became stuck permanently in sort of the Savage world, the Age of Apocalypse world. So things like Freak Force, who was one of the super teams in Savage Dragon's universe, these were characters that had been recruited on the Chicago police to help him out back when he was a police officer for the first couple of years. And Freak Force had a lot of their own adventures, and they had their own comic book series, Vic Bridges did the art, and Keith Griffin, the uh, plots with Eric doing some of the scripts. It was a really entertaining book. But this whole Savage World, Age of Apocalypse thing, it changed the course of events. So, for example, Mighty Man, who had a secret identity that he, well, actually, she, <laughs> I guess, revealed to the team that Nurse Ann Stevens was really Mighty Man. Yeah, sorry, spoiler alert for a 25-year-old mystery. So this event never occurred in this alternate reality that, that Dragon got thrown in. When he met Mighty Man, or rather Ann Stevens, she didn't know she was Mighty Man because the events leading to her gaining the powers were different and she never realized she had them in this reality. So it was the whole domino effect that you, know, you change one event, like Professor X dying in Age of Apocalypse, and suddenly everything is different. So, things got a little out of control continuity-wise, and Eric decided he was going to do his own cleanup and his own sort of, you know, crisis. And he used the character Mr. Glum, there he is again in his tech suit, who invaded a sort of a, a time citadel. I'll kind of, not dumb it down, but simplify it, um, just to make it easy to understand if you're not up on Savage Dragon continuity. And essentially, he went into this interdimensional citadel, essentially, that was monitoring all of the different realities. There's a different reality on each one of those screens. And Mr. Glum, who was in love with Savage Dragon's, uh, well, stepdaughter? Or, uh, I'm not, not sure how, not his biological daughter, but I guess his adopted daughter, uh, his, his wife's daughter. So, yeah, he was in love with her in another reality. He wanted to bring that back because she wasn't in love with him anymore, and he figured he could find a, some alternate reality where she still had feelings for him. And so he decided to screw with all of the monitors and basically take different realities and join them together and end the multiverse so there would only be one reality. And by doing this, uh, it, it essentially combined every possible reality that ever existed, not just in Savage Dragon, but the idea was in the entire multiverse. And art-wise, visually, it was actually handled really innovatively that there were these giant shards of glass falling on the panels that represented different images from different realities interfering and sort of coming into characters' minds as Mr. Glum in the uh, Time Citadel, if you will, was unplugging and plugging in different realities and sort of canceling them out and pushing them into one. So all the characters started seeing, like, oh, I was married to this person in this reality, or, you know, I accidentally killed this person in this reality, and now, oh my god, did I actually kill that person? What's going on? I, wait, I don't remember that. Did I do that? And it became a way to essentially take every time-traveling adventure, all of the Age of Apocalypse, i.e. Savage World stuff, and make it count. That was the whole point. So what Eric, and he was, he was very clear about it. I mean, you know, he, he said this in interviews and in the letter page that, yeah, something like the New 52 really got to him. So, you know, Glum here talks about merging SD75-30.1, meaning Savage Dragon 75, page 30, panel 1. So he took that reality that was created back in issue 75 on that panel, and bam, everything, you know. So all the crazy stuff that had ever happened was suddenly now merging into one reality, and every other reality was deleted. Even the reality where uh, Eric's, the original version of Dragon, Paul Dragon, you can see him at the very bottom there, uh, everyone remembers everything, basically. So because of the erasing of the multiverse and combining them, the way it worked was every character now could rem had, had sort of memories of every single universe. And anything that happened in any multiverse, you would have memories of your counterpart. This was Eric's direct way of making everything count. So... 
he cleaned up all of the uh, continuity and basically put everything together, combined it into one pot. So now, if something happened in one reality, the you know it's like this like Scarlet Witch, how she's like a meta character that that can overlap through the multiverse. So same thing. Now every character was like this, and every character had memories of every version of them. So unlike the new Fifty Two, which literally just wiped out years and years of continuity and comic book buying and comic book saving. Eric's uh, Eric's take was basically uh, very refreshing. It made everything count. He's done this before in smaller ways, like the time that he teamed up with Howard the Duck's creator in order to liberate Howard from Marvel Comics and replace him with a clone. And uh, Howard escaped into the Image Universe and went into the Witness Protection Program as Leonard the Duck. So kind of, you know, similar to that, Savage Dragon very much is always a, the, the title, is, is very much out of the box. And I thought this was a great solution to that reboot problem. So, you know, hey, if, if you're looking for a comic book that you want to grab that uh, will be very satisfying, and if you were left feeling a little out, out there with, you know, companies erasing continuity, hey, this is a comic book for you. Let me know what you think. Uh, have you been put off by comic book companies rebooting their continuity and making things not count anymore? What do you think of Eric's solution? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'll see you guys in the next video.